Well, there is a new push in Albany to crack down on driving while intoxicated. So there's a new bill, and it would lower New York State's blood alcohol limit from the current 0.08% to 0.05 percent. State and city officials and family members who've lost loved ones to drunk driving recently rallied for the change at the Capitol. State Senator John Liu of Queens leading the charge. He's joining us right now from Albany. Nice to have you back on Good Day. Good morning. So why is this bill so important to you? What kind of a difference would we see? Let me say that being an elected representative, there are fewer things more difficult than having to meet with people, mothers who have lost their children and family members due to accidents, crashes caused by drunk drivers. It continues to be a problem. And unfortunately, it's been escalating in recent years. So we're looking to adopt a standard uh, the lowering of that limit, as you mentioned, from 0.08% to 0.05%. That's a standard that the National Transportation Safety Board, which has been studying drunken driving crashes for many years now, they are recommending that 0.05 standard be adopted. So, Senator, it, we would be like the only, well, the second state to, to enact something like that, right? Utah is doing it. How many drinks equals 0.05? The experts say that 0.05, it would be uh, a 160 pound man having three drinks or someone who's slider having two drinks. Uh, the point is though, that it's not about how many drinks before you get to that 0.05. The strong message here is that, you know, have a drink, have drinks, enjoy yourself. Just don't drive right afterwards. Call an Uber, call your family or friends to pick you up. But it's just totally irresponsible to to get behind the steering wheel after drinking, and and you know you take lives. And the thing is, you know nobody expects to be a drunken driver. They always think that it's okay. Well, we're trying to send a message here and complying with the NTSB's strong request that uh, that the state of New York do this. And beyond Utah, Rosanna. It's uh, over 100 nations around the world have adopted this uniform 0.05 standard. We should follow suit. Let me ask you some of the questions about the opponents to this. What are you getting in terms of that? Because obviously restaurants, I'm sure, may be uh, against this. What are they saying and what are you hearing? There, there has been a huge amount of pushback from restaurant owners. You know, again, we're not discouraging people from having drinks during dinner or after work. Just don't drive right afterwards. And nowadays, there are just so many options uh, uh, for getting home after enjoying yourself. Yeah. The restaurant owners, uh, you know, I haven't heard a whole lot of pushback from them. There are some people who say, well, why 0.05 and not 0.04 or not 0.03? The reality is that the data and the science, it, it, they show that 0.05, at 0.05, human, you know, visual, motor, cognitive ability starts to erode very quickly. And no one should get behind a wheel at 0.05. It's a standard that's been adopted widely internationally. The mm -hmm. state of Utah has, adopt, has adopted it. I actually wish the state of New York would have been the first, mm -hmm. but I certainly want to be towards the last. Yeah, I know. We're looking at a bunch of countries that do this. France already. I know in, in the Netherlands, they have a higher consumption of alcohol than us and a lower rate of death, and they have the adopted 0 0.05. But um, while right. you're in Albany right now, I mean, I know you're trying to get this pushed through, but you know, we, we talk about bail reform all day, every day here. Is that something on, on the docket, and where are you guys getting headway with that? Well, the bail laws were reformed in 2019. And now they are, they are, the governor has proposed some additional amendments to that bail reform. But I think to the governor's credit, she is focused on public safety, making people say, safer and feel safer, which is something that we are all focused on. Which is part of bail, bail reform. Bail reform is just one component of that. There, there are issues with regard to mental health and restoration of inpatient beds for mental health patients. There is a homelessness crisis that we still are grappling with. And so I, I think the governor's on the right track when she she talks about a whole host of remedies and solutions towards public safety. I know, safety. but it, you know what, Senator, it's, it's very difficult, as you know, you live in this area, and I'm sure you have it in your neighborhood. 
Um, I know black and brown communities are dealing with lots of crime. We had a shooting outside a school in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, the second shooting Terrible. in that area just this week. And the kids are getting younger and younger with guns. Now, Albany changed the raise the age. I mean, how do we, how, how do we connect well, you, the dots you, here, Senator? You, you said it. You said it right there. That the guns are out of control, and so we continue to enact measures, strong measures against guns, illegal guns, and guns coming from out of the state. But at the same at the same time, we need to have gun control at the federal level. And I was heartened by President Biden's speech just the other day that he's going to focus on gun on gun safety because we do need to get the guns off the streets. I know, but it's not guns to... because at one point, like if it's not guns, they got a machete. I mean, they're pushing people in front of trains. I mean, you, you name it, it, it's out there. I mean, something's got to be done in Albany when you have the mayor of one of the biggest cities in, in the country coming to Albany and begging for some kind of reform. Why, why, aren't, why aren't you listening up in Albany? <laughs> Actually, we have listened. Uh, just last year, as part of the budget package, we did enact additional changes. And the mayor and the governor are working closely on making on measures to make people safer. So we are contemplating all of those issues. But to simply focus on bail reform, it's become like the, the fashionable buzzword here. Yeah. That's not going to get us the solutions to make people safer. Well, we need a whole, a whole host of issues, including, as you mentioned, gun control, t dealing with mental health patients, and tackling the homelessness crisis head on. Yeah, but I mean, if, if you don't tackle bail reform, uh, you can't just say, well, we've got to do all three and not just one. you still got to focus on one. And I think that's, that's a major issue that your voters, the people that voted you in, care about. Just look at the record. We, have, we made changes last year, and the governor's proposing additional changes this year. It's something that's, that we're deliberating through the budget process. Hmm. All right. Well, we're going to keep an eye on you, Senator Lou. I'll see you next month or yes. earlier if you'd like. Why? Oh, you're going to come back? We, we got a lot to talk about. We want to see Absolutely. you face to face. Yeah. And face we want to an, face. And an update on this BAC law as well, too. That's right. I, I look forward to seeing you in person. Good. All right. Thank you, Senator Lou. We appreciate you talking to us. Have a great day. All right.